on guys it's your boy welcome back to another video so today we are going to be talking about the book of clarence this is a movie that came out over the weekend and um i really needed to take my time to really digest this movie and let it my uh brain thoughts kind of linger on it for a little bit because this movie is very interesting to me and um i wasn't entirely sure how i felt about it but i've kind of kind of like came to my conclusion as to how i feel about the movie so with that being said let's dive right into it my movie review, review. Alrighty, so the movie The Book of Clarence, for people who do not know, is apparently a biblical story, and I had no idea. Um, this is probably, like, the first movie in a really long time that I went into it fully blind. I knew nothing about what this movie was. Um, I went to see this movie because I knew that Lakeith Stanfield was the lead actor, and I absolutely love Lakeith Stanfield. I think he's incredible. And I knew that um, Caleb McLaughlin, I believe is how you pronounce his name, um, the guy who plays Lucas from Stranger Things was going to be in this. So I was like, you know what? Those are two really good actors. I like them in all of their movies and shows and stuff that I've seen them in. Let's go ahead and watch this movie. And um, let me just say, going into this movie blind made it a very interesting trip. So I'm going to go ahead and, before I dive too far into this Give a spoiler warning because I think of all of the movies that I've seen in the last couple of weeks, this is probably the biggest one that could be ruined with spoils. So if you have not seen the movie, I would suggest clicking away and potentially coming back and watching this video after you've seen the movie. But that being said, I'm going to dive right into this. So um, this movie, like I mentioned before, is a biblical movie, which I had no idea. Um, I literally just saw Lakeith Stanfield. It was like, this set looks cool. Let me uh, go watch it. And uh, so the opening sequence is um a bunch of people being crucified and um uh, right off the bat i see one of them the one in the front looks like jesus looks like benedict cumberbatch so that kind of like spoiled a really cool like twist reveal at the end of the movie but um i i like that and then uh we obviously see uh lakeith stanfield's character clarence is hung up on the crucifix as well and um then it just kind of cuts to a kind of like title opening card it says chapter one and then um, it says, I believe the first one is the 13th Aristotle or something like that. Um, I, I, I don't remember the exact words, but the people who were friends with um, Jesus, he had his like apostles. Is that what it is? I don't know. Something like that, where they're like the friends of Jesus. And they're basically the people who um, are constantly with him and sharing his message and stuff like that. And uh, basically, this movie starts off with a very interesting kind of like chariot race throughout um, an old Jerusalem city. Um, and we see a character who we don't really know the name of is racing against Clarence and his best friend. And uh, they're racing through the city. We're not entirely sure what exactly is happening, but you can tell it's kind of like a olden day illegal street race type thing. And um, it looks like a lot of fun. There's a really good... Um, entire race sequence that's about like three minutes long four minutes long at the beginning of the movie and um it ends with lakeith stanfield and his best friend crashing um the horse running away the chariot running away and um them losing some of the literal clothes off of their backs and um then it goes to them kind of talking about what just happened and being like oh crap this isn't good we're going to owe so-and-so a lot of money. I don't remember his name because there were a lot of people introduced in this movie. There was a lot of characters, which I was not ready for. Um, but what's it called? They they owed this guy some money and they were trying to figure out how they were going to pay him back. And uh, it leads to the spiral of a very interesting biblical story. So um, the first thing that they attempt to do is um, Clarence is like, well, you know, if we don't pay back this guy's debt, He's going to kill us, so we have a couple of options here. And the first thing he tries to do is get baptized, but everybody knows that Clarence is not somebody who believes in Jesus or the Messiah or any of that. So um, when he goes to get baptized, it's a very funny interaction with him and like the preacher who's just like, you, you're an idiot. Why are you trying to get baptized? We know you don't believe in Jesus. And he slaps him a couple of times. And then eventually when he um, baptizes him, he like holds him underwater for a while. And it's an incredibly funny sequence um so that doesn't work out um and then Lakeith Stenfield kind of like goes back to his house or whatever or I think he goes and visits the girl who he really likes um and they have an interaction where she talks to him about how you know he has a lot of talent and he has a lot of potential but he never puts his um mind to good use and he's always wasting his time doing a bunch of illegal things when he could be making money in uh, a better way and um it kind of sets up the fact that uh, Lakeith Stanfield's character, Clarence, is somebody who's kind of like a shady person. He's kind of a troublemaker. There's a lot of things that he could potentially be doing to make money the right way, but um, 
he doesn't he doesn't want to work like that he, he kind of thinks that regular jobs and stuff like that kind of seem to be beneath him and um it sets up that Lakeith Stanfield's character is a non-believer this is where it like really puts the nail on the ground hey he doesn't believe in God he doesn't believe in Jesus any of that stuff because he's very down upon his luck he uh, lives with his single mom or whatever and they are doing whatever they can to make ends meet and it's really really tough on them and he doesn't believe that god would kind of like leave some people to be as unfortunate as he is so um that's a very deep conversation which i think is very interesting and it works relatively well and um it goes from him talking to his girlfriend and she basically um having this deep conversation with him and then he realizes you know what maybe other people have said that he's not good enough for her maybe he's not and he's kind of like okay well, the baptism thing didn't work. Me telling her about my newfound faith didn't work. Uh, maybe I need to actually become one of Jesus's, like I said, I don't remember the word. It's like apostles or something like that. And uh, maybe I could try to, you know, join their little like group and start spreading the word of Jesus Christ or whatever. And so he goes to their house, pitches, you know, the deal. And it was like, hey, let me join you guys. And uh, they shut him down very fast. And um, one of them is like, you know what? Let's give him a chance. And they give him a task that is damn near impossible. And it's like, if you complete this task, uh, we'll, we'll let you join the club. And um, the task is to free 20 slaves from this guy who has a bunch of slaves or whatever. And um, it's basically a giant death mission. And everybody who is a part of the Apostles knows that. And Clarence himself kind of knows that. But he's like, you know what? Let's go do it. And um, that leads to a sequence where they go try to free the slaves, slave owners, like, not gonna happen, and uh, we get introduced to this new character, um, once again, don't remember the names, there were a lot of different names that were introduced in, uh, the two-hour-long movie or whatever, um, but we call him Immortal, because he says he's immortal a lot of times, and, uh, he proves that he's immortal throughout the length of the movie, um, and Lakeith Stanfield and him have a little fight sequence, because the slave owner's like, if you can beat this guy in a fight, uh, I'll free w one of my slaves or something like that. And so they do that. And, um, Lakeith Stanfield ends up taking the immortal one and, um, he breaks him out. They bring him to the disciples. Oh, that's the word, isn't it? It's not air apostles or something like that. I'm thinking of some like clothing brand or something. It's called a disciple, the disciples of Jesus. I wasn't even remotely close. God damn. Okay. Anyways, but yeah, he brings them back to the disciples and the disciples are like, uh, you freed one slave. We said free all of the slaves. This is a single dude. What What is that worth anything? And um, they basically shun him and like send him away. And um, now, after all of that hard work and effort, Clarence is like, well, nothing's working. Kind of looks like he's going to give up a little bit. And then he gets a little light bulb idea. And uh, we see chapter two, the, the, the tar title card comes up or whatever. It says chapter two, new messiah. And, um, Clarence decides, you know what? I'm going to be the new Messiah. And, uh, it's, it's so funny. The reveal of it is fantastic. The fact that that's his idea is great. And then we get to see just like a bunch of montages of him going around pretending to save the people in his friend group over and over again. And, um, just kind of like tricking a bunch of audiences into believing that he is Jesus and he's doing all these like really cool things. And, um, Throughout the, you know, montage, we're seeing that, like, they're getting a bunch of money from donations and stuff like that. They're actually, like, tricking a lot of people into thinking that he is this cool almighty figure. And uh, it's a lot of really fun sequences that I think work really well. The comedy in this works incredibly well. And um, they make a bunch of riches, and they finally have enough to pay back the debt. So Clarence doesn't need to worry about dying anymore. And um, during this entire sequence Clarence has a lot of like moments of like really bad self-doubt where he's kind of like feels really bad about what he's doing he doesn't know if he should be doing what he's doing and um eventually when they finally are like hey we have all this money what are we going to do with it Clarence decides to out of just like the kindness of his heart go back to where they broke out the immortal one and um just free all of the slaves that he was originally going to free anyways he doesn't even try to like rub it in the aristotle's faces or anything like that he just does it to be a good person and it's a very interesting story that was very emotional and um i really liked that part of the movie and then um after that things kind of skyrocket and go uphill very very fast so um throughout this movie clarence has a love interest and 
finally during this night or whatever he's kind of going to prove to her that he's a better man now and he's more worthy of her and they're going to have you know the best night ever so they kind of have like a night on the town type moment or whatever and there's a nice little like dance sequence and stuff like that he kisses her and then she runs away and then um like i said all hell kind of breaks loose very immediately um he finds out that uh, when he steps outside, the guy who he owes a debt to is there, and there's a whole, like, mob of people who are kind of, like, waiting for him, and uh, he feels kind of, like, betrayed, set up, like, uh, he's gonna get in a serious amount of trouble, and uh, then the people who are from Rome come over, and they're looking for the Messiah, and, you know, people now think he's the Messiah, so he kind of gets given away, and um, they uh, try to kill Mr. Immortal in a very epic sequence where he is running away and trying to escape and um they they throw multiple spears through him and uh it's revealed earlier in the movie that the uh immortal one has one weakness and it's one of his achilles tendons or whatever and uh we see one of the spears go through his Ach achilles tendon and we're like oh my god no he's going to die and then um what's it called he kind of like falls dead for a little bit someone goes to a uh, retrieve his body and then he wakes up grabs the guy by the neck and says wrong ankle motherfucker and it's dope fucking sequence but um things still don't work out very well for uh clarence clarence is still captured and uh they think he's a messiah so they're gonna put him on display and show that he's the messiah and kind of uh take him away so they can crucify him but um before they do that they uh test to see if he's the messiah and they have him try to walk on water. And this moment, in my opinion, might be one of my favorite moments I've seen in all of cinema in a really long time. Um, they have him try to walk on water. It's revealed he doesn't know how to swim. So if he falls in, um, this is really deep water. He could be, you know, dead, basically. Um, and he's freaking out. He's shaking incredibly hard. And then he takes the first step and he doesn't fall and nothing happens. He takes a second step. He doesn't fall. He is walking on water. And it's a really, really cool moment. He continues to walk across. And um, he gets halfway through it. And uh, everyone's freaking out. He's freaking out. Um, the guy who's kind of in charge of this whole, like, Rome situation um, is like, you guys need to go in there and capture him. And uh, all the guards are trying to catch him. But they keep falling into the water. And he's walking on top of the water. And it's a really cool sequence. I really loved everything about that. Um, but he doesn't end up getting away. He still gets captured. And, um, then we get to the final moment, which is the crucifixion, which is an incredibly hard watch. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, he gets whipped while he's going up the, the mountain or whatever, and he's carrying his, uh, cross or whatever on his back. And, um, it's very symbolic, but like I said, very hard to watch, um, he kind of is watching, you know, all of his loved ones crying as he's going up the hill. And um, he he, uh, he gets crucified. And um, Benedict Cumberbatch also gets crucified. And they kind of make like a joke that um, they were trying to find Jesus, but they could never find Jesus. But they're like, there's this white guy who has beautiful flowing hair and he was giving out money to people. It must be him. So um, that's how in this story or whatever this is how jesus is depicted as a white dude always which i love that little joke at the end i think that that was a good way to kind of bring things back and then um at the end of the movie uh we have you know easter is about jesus coming back to life uh clarence gets revived by the actual jesus at the end of the movie and uh, i think it's a really great story this movie was a journey like i'm not gonna lie this movie was a very long adventure and there was a lot of stuff in it that um was very interesting my emotions were literally on a roller coaster because on the one hand great love story in this movie great comedy on the other hand really hard to watch like violent sequences and um i did not know how to feel watching this movie but uh i really dug it i i, I think i did really like it and i think when it comes out on blu-ray dvd i'll probably get it um i'm gonna give this movie a solid i'm gonna give it a 79 out of 100 i think that it's pretty good but because it has so much going on in it there are parts of it that kind of feels like it's dragging a little bit but other than that it's a good movie i would definitely recommend watching it and uh yeah that was it for this video guys thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out if you liked it feel free to like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys in the next one peace out bow bow
dead between dinners. Wanna be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run a fine kid and go for listings. I wanna live within the business. Buy more than what's on the clearances. You're getting big cause I know you're a physicist. I wanna deny this shit, I'm unlimited.